First question's from Mike Triplett. Hey, Mickey, I'll start with uh, just a timely one in Mobile here since uh, I'm sitting in my Mobile hotel room. <laughs> it's obviously, okay. it's obviously uh, different. What, what, what did you guys do differently? Who, how many people did you send and, and what did you have to cut out because of the way they're doing it differently this year? Yeah, we have, we have, uh, it's a limit of 10 per club. And, and so we've got our 10, it's our, uh, you know, primarily our college scouting staff and myself, Jeff Ireland, um, you know, some of our area scouts and then our national scouts as well. So, um, that's a little different, you know, we don't typically if, uh, if available, the coaches are all here with us, you know, we bring a big contingent because of the proximity. Uh, and then we want to support uh, Mobile and support the Senior Bowl as well. Uh, but this year, because of the uh, COVID restrictions, we're, we're limited to 10 people. Next one's from Rod Walker. Hey, Mickey, not just Mobile, but just scouting in general this season. How, how, what, is, what have been the challenges of just trying to scout during COVID? Yeah, I, look, it, it's been a tough uh, uh, year for our, our college, co our college uh, scouting staff because – They've been very limited in what they can do. They can't really do any on-campus visits uh, this past year. So they can go to games, um, but really they're, they're limited uh, in, in the sense that they can't go into the football offices and visit with players and coaches uh, on campus visits. So uh, that has to be done, you know, virtually or uh, uh, in a lot of film study as well. So it's been, it's been considerably different. Next one's from Fletcher Mackle. Hey, Mickey. Um, obviously, I know that this offseason will probably be a little different given Drew's situation. Do you go in different paths of a plan if Drew returns, a plan if Drew retires? Just how do you take the early offseason knowing that he's still pondering that decision? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a lot different than last year and that, you know, we'll wait. Um, you know, we'll wait for him, but but look, we've got a lot of other planning to do. Look, there's there's more unknowns right now than there are knowns uh, in the sense that we don't we don't yet know what the cap's going to be next year. Um, you know, even even a narrow range we don't have yet. So uh, we've got a lot of planning to do. We haven't we haven't uh, completed our um, evaluations, our roster evaluations from last season. So at this point in time, there's there's more unknowns than there are, there are knowns. Next one's from Amos Morale. Uh, well, you, you kind of touched on my question just now uh, was I was going to ask you where you were with the roster evaluations and if you guys had identified positions of need. No, we're not anywhere close to that. Um, we're going to meet next week and, and begin that process of, of evaluating the roster. And, and again, um, you know, until we get through that process and then understand exactly uh, you know, what resources we're going to have available to us. Uh, we really haven't got an action plan in place yet. Next one's from Ed Daniels. Mickey, how important is it to retain Trey Hendrickson? And is he a big um, item for you, so to speak, in the off season? Well, look, uh, Trey had a great season, a breakout season for him. And obviously he's going to be uh, um, an attractive you know, free agent for anyone. Um, but, but again, that, that's all part of the planning process. Well, you know, part of that has to do with uh, certainly we would want him back, but you know, I can't really say, you know, how, how strong a play we can make for that until I understand, you know, where, where uh, the cap's going to be this year. And, and as we go through the roster evaluations and start making our choices. Next one's from Mike Triplett. Mickey, I know you guys have a pretty good record against the salary cap over the years, even when people think it's going to uh, handcuff you. But is this a, a more daunting situation, or is it? I mean, are you do you envision that you're going to actually have to pick some players on the team that can't be with the team because of the cap, or what, what's your outlook on it right now? Yeah, I, I think this look for sure. It's going to be challenging, and yet I don't want to speculate as to you know how challenging it's going to be until we have a better understanding of, of uh, what's going to be available, not just for this year, but, but even for the year after. So um, I can't really answer that question other than to say, yeah, it's going to be daunting. I think it's going to be daunting for, for a majority of teams in our league. And do you think because of the combination of the cap and, and the possibility of any changes at quarterback, do you, do you guys have to decide if you want to stay 
putting every resource you can into contending for a championship in 2021 or, you know, sort of we have to rebuild and we have to rebuild this cap or is there an in-between? Yeah. I Look, that's, again, that's kind of tough to answer right now, but I, listen, we, we've got a, a great roster and, and uh, I can't foresee a, a circumstance where we're not going to say, man, we're going to, we're going to do everything we can to, to win, win now uh, uh, and compete for, uh, you know, a, a championship. So, um, but again, it's, it, it's difficult to, to really get into specifically what we need to do until, until we have more information. Next one's from John DeSager. Mickey, when you mention those unknowns, do you, do you have several different projections that you kind of apply and then when you know the knowns, be able to make one applicable or do you just wait until things firm up? And, and second, how has scouting changed you'll bring over from last year to this year? Yeah, um, I didn't hear the last part of that. The first part, yeah, I, I would say we have a framework of, of things that we know we can do and, and, and whether we need to do them and, uh, and to what extent remains to be seen. But um, yeah, I mean, w- w- we've thought about, okay, you know, the different levels that, that we'll have to deal with. Next one's from Larry Holder. Mickey, broad question here, but uh, where does this team need to improve uh, to advance further in a season? Um, well, again, you know, I think that the answer to that will kick out of, you know, our end of season evaluations and, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of variables to that, including, you know, who are the free agents on our team and, you know, who do we end up losing? You know, what, 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 uh, you know, there's just, there's just too many unanswered questions for me to answer that specifically because we, you know, we don't have all of the, uh, the information yet. Uh, certainly, you know, we can always improve and we're always looking to improve, but, but, uh, you know, give me a few weeks here and I'll be able to answer that a little more uh, specifically. Next one's from Nick Underhill. Uh, Mickey, what will the impact be of losing Terry Fontenot? And do you guys have someone you're going to replace him with yet? Yeah, look, Terry Terry Fontenot has been fantastic for us and, and we're excited that he gets this opportunity. Um, we have some guys in the building that, that, uh, we have a lot of faith in and, and talented guys. And so we'll adapt. Um, look, you never like to lose, you know, good people and, and both in the personnel and the coaching side, but you were excited for all those guys and the opportunities that they've got. Next one's from Amy Just. Yeah, that was basically my question, but um, what uh, is the timeline there with uh, potentially making a, uh, a change there and putting somebody in that position and then as well as the, the coaching staff changes that you need to make as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we have a set timetable. We're going to take our time, make sure we make the right decision. There's no hurry. There's no reason to be in a hurry. Um, it's more important to get it right than it is to, you know, do it fast. Next one's from Catherine Terrell. Hey Mickey, I was wondering if this year feels like there's more turnover than normal I know there are years where you move a lot of coaches around and lose a lot of coaches but to me it just feels like it's a bigger turnover I guess because they've been here longer I don't know if you you have that sense at all if it's just kind of yeah yeah I would say it does feel like um more than usual but part of that may be just that look so many guys had opportunities to interview and and were close uh, not just the guys that ended up getting uh, uh, opportunities, but some of the guys that interviewed and got close to uh, being offered new opportunities. So it does feel like there was a lot of that. I think when we just count the numbers, it, it probably isn't uh, isn't uh, too unusual, but but it does feel like that. I agree. Next one's from Fletcher Mackle. Thank you. When Sean uh, did his season ender, he talked about liking – the players in the quarterback room, Taysom and Jameis. How do you all maybe reconcile that with also potentially, if you do explore veterans who may be available during the off season, knowing that you like what you have, even if it's a little more unproven, but there may be proven veterans out there in some capacity. Is that something you all discuss and how do you kind of thread the needle to do both? Yeah. You know, again, that, you know, that will, the answers to that will kick out 
over the next few weeks as we go through evaluations and we talk about our roster, we talk about every position. Um, you know, generally speaking, we're, you know, we're, we're, we target our own guys first. And, and uh, but, but again, that there's a lot of that, uh, the answers to that remain to be seen here. And we'll get the answers to that over the next few weeks. Next one's from Luke Johnson. Uh, kind of really that Mickey. Um, it looks like this this sort of off season uh, could just be like a lot of backs kind of moving around throughout throughout kind of the league as it was last year. Um, how does that, if at all, uh, change like off season process uh, for your act with this? Uh, I'm sorry, you cut out. I I really didn't get the question. I'm sorry, Mickey. Uh, it, it, it looks like there, there might be just like a, a possibility for like a lot of quarterback over kind of a rugby league, um, like there was last year it, it, that at all uh, your acquisition um, from your standpoint. Um, you still cut out. I, I'm, I think you're asking me about the quarterbacks that uh, are going to be out there. There was a number last year and it looks like there might be a number available this year. And, you know, again, all that evaluation and what happens with that, um, still remains to be seen. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about every position again, but, but look, we like Taysom, we like Jameis, we like what they did for us. Um, but again, just like every other position, we're going to, we're going to have a lot of discussions over the next week or two and, and, and uh, you know, move on from there. Next one's from Amos Morale. Yeah. Uh, I know you're still really early in the prospect evaluation process part of it, but have you noticed any strengths of this draft class or any areas where you think there's a little bit more talent? Yeah. I, you know, I don't have the answer to that yet. Although, man, I was really impressed with uh, so far with the group here in Mobile. Um, um, I think they've got, you know, a lot of talent, a lot of good looking players and, and uh, you know, it feels like we know less about, about this class of players than, than any class in recent memory, just because of, you know, the COVID restrictions, the restrictions on, on scouts getting into campuses, as well as, um, you know, the fact that there were so many, uh, uh, so fewer games played in college football this year. So uh, I'm anxious to get going with, uh, with our group. And, and um, but, I, but I feel good about it just at, at this first glance. Next one's from Mike Triplett. Two real quick here, Mickey. First of all, did, are you guys officially getting definitely two third round compensatory picks after Terry was hired or is that still not finalized? Yeah, I think it's final. I mean, I haven't, I haven't got a, a notification <laughs> or anything like that, but um, I'm not sure what the process is if they, if they, uh, if, if they give that, but certainly he qualified and, and uh, you know, I'm expecting that. Um, and then uh, when it comes to drafting quarterbacks, I think it's easy for people to say, oh, you know what the Saints should do? They should draft one in round three or four or five and develop him, and he'll be ready to start in a couple of years. How come that so rarely actually happens in the NFL? I think like Jimmy Garoppolo, maybe Kirk Cousins are a couple of examples of guys who are drafted in the middle rounds and started a couple of years later. But, but it, it seems to rarely happen. Is that hard to identify the talent of the position or hard to have the patience to, to develop a guy over three years or – well, you know, look, I, I think, first of all, there, there, there have been a number of examples. That, you know, Russell Wilson's an example of a guy that went, uh, didn't go in the first round and, and was developed and, and actually played early on. But, but uh, I, you know, I think this, for you to draft a, a player, uh, you know, in the second or third round, you, you got to love the player. you got to have a vision for him. And, and oftentimes, look, we've had guys that we've had, had our eye on and, and uh, you know, a target on, but – you know, they got taken before we could get them. So over the years that's happened. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think, look, I think playing the position number one and, and being successful at it is a difficult proposition in the NFL. So, um, you know, there's that part of the development, but, but it, it can certainly occur and has occurred. And, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens this year. I think there's a number of good quarterback prospects in this draft. Next one's from Luke Johnson. I'm going to be Luke since his uh, internet's not working. Um, okay. Do you know how uh, many uh, comp picks in addition to the ones for Terry that you'll have this year? Yeah, I don't, I don't have that information yet. We're, we're typically we get that uh, at the labor seminar, which didn't occur this year, but that's going to, they're going to do that um, 
I think in the next few weeks and, and hopefully we'll have an answer um, on what, what, what we have. Can I jump in real quick on the, on the Quan trade? Did, did he uh, meet the playtime incentives to where you guys got to give up? I, I believe it's the fifth or, or will you guys keep that? Um, ah, it's a good question. I don't have the answer to it uh, at my fingertips here. Last one's from Sean Vazend. Hey, Mickey, I'm sorry if I missed this earlier, but um, is Terry taking any scouts with him to Atlanta or has that been discussed at all? Um, currently, he is not. All right, we're all set. Thank you. We're all set. Thank you.